Hello, and welcome to another episode of Robotics 101. My name is Huang from FRC Team 6520, Green Arms Robotics Team. In this video, we will bring you the continuation of the pre-brainstorm process. Last time, we discussed the research that has to be done before the actual season, including the research on community and research on the materials that are commonly found on robots. Our topic for the day will be the kickstarting process, followed by the manual analysis, and finally, the goal establishing and also the strategizing process of the season. These steps will decide the general directory of the entire season. So it is crucial that these steps are executed flawlessly before tackling any matter of the actual build. So, let's kick it off with, well, the kickoff. The kickoff is essentially the start of the whole build season. It sets the tone for your team throughout the season. So it is important that you and your team start off strong and powerful so that such energy and enthusiasm will follow you throughout the entire season. Our team's recommendation for an empowering, fun, and productive kickoff is to gather your whole team around for an online or better offline meeting to watch the FRC kickstarting event following watching said event. Some activities to do is to discuss the game, re uh, an analyze the game manual, and also some slight brainstorming. But it is also crucial to remember not to get too specific with any single ideas so it won't affect the later much more important brainstorm process. Next, let's discuss the perhaps most important document of the entire game season, which is the game manual. Generally, a game manual for any robotics competition is way too long and over complicated that it makes reading and comprehending it almost impossible to do it quickly on one's own. In our case, we get 180 or so pages of mess that FRC calls a manual. Alongside that is the cat file of the game field that, while pretty, contains every single nuts and bolts a benevolent god has ever imagined. So, uh, it makes the cat file excruciatingly large and very hard to read on your typical laptop. The same goes for other robotics competition, such as VEX Robotics, where we get around 60 pages, which is better, but still way too complicated. From our experience, it is best to make a more concise and simpler version of the game field and also the game manual. So regarding the matter of the shortened manual, what does it need to contain, you may ask? So it only needs to contain four simple parts, which is the first one, the pictures and drawings that are included in the manual. Next are the diameters and important numbers that are included. Uh, the next is the scoring system. And finally, restrictions on the robots and on the game. More effectively and quickly, it is best to divide the whole manual into chunks according to the table of content. And also important to remember is that no one should get more than around 20 pages of reading for maximal efficiency. Next, regarding the excruciatingly large cat file, our team's suggestion to solve such a problem is to make a concise, more simpler version of the, of the cat of the game field. Such a cat file only needs to contain essentials, shapes, and diameters of the game field and also the game piece. So finally, we are at the goal establishing and also the strategizing part of this episode. 
This is probably the more technical part that you need to pay attention to. To establish your goal firmly, you first need to answer some questions. But it is not a question of what should our robot looks like, or what color should it be, or what should it be made out of, but rather stick to the simpler question, which is what it needs to do, what, what the actual game asks it, asks it to do. Pick out its tasks from the actual game manual. Generally, an FRC robot's task can be put into three main categories. The first is the maneuver and the obstacle crossing. The second is rather a chain of subtasks. Of these subtasks are first intake, followed by serialize, and finally scoring by shooting the game piece into the goal. This second category of task is usually the most common way for a robot to score a goal. And finally, and probably the, one of the most challenging part of the, of the entire game, which is the climbing. This task requires the robot to elevate itself to a certain height by itself or using or with the help of other robots. Once that you have successfully picked out these tasks from the actual game and put them into their coding category, it is then important to remember to put the task into a line of action or to make it more simply. Make sure that every single task that your robot does makes sense with one another. One great example of this is back in the FRC game 2019, where successful teams have managed to integrate the climbing mechanism into the elevator mechanism, which is a mechanism used to deliver the ball from the ground to a predetermined height to score. One bad example of this, however, is back in our team's mock competition. One team designed a flawless shooting mechanism and, and an impeccable serializer, a very vulnerable and fragile intake, which makes the robots pretty much useless and every disaster in every meaning of the word. More detailed in this process so that it is more convenient in later processes, we recommend that you put priorities on your design properties. To illustrate this, we're gonna use a part that is essential to every single robot, which is the drive base. The most important property for a drive base to have, it is its stability. Why, you may ask? It is because the drive base support the whole robot. No matter how good your shooting or serialize or climbing mechanism is, if the drive base breaks down, you're screwed. Plus, the drive base also includes essential and important electric components such as sensors. So, for the most accurate data you can get out of the sensor, it is important for the drive base to be not flimsy. Next, once stability is considered and taken care of, we can consider properties like maneuverability. Now, you can factor in stuff like the swerve drive, the mechanism drive, or the omni drive. Depending on your strategy, you want to play defense or, off or offense, you might want to opt for a gear switch in your drivetrain for flexibility in case you want to change from offense to defense or vice versa. A more detailed analysis of this whole process can be found on the description below. So we, re we recommend that you check it out. To recap, in the last two episodes, we went through the pre-brainstorm process where we discussed the research that has to be done before the actual season 
including research on community and materials on robot. Next, we discussed the kickstarting process, followed by the manual analysis. In the next few episodes, we will get much more technical Nerd alert. with tutorials that will have direct consequence on your robot. So thanks for watching and stay tuned.